designed free fold. The globalists, George Soros, all of them are saying, give the private banking dictatorship that engineered all this total power. In Europe, set up a European Union football team. No more national sovereignty of any level. Pay us everything, slash everything, raise taxes, uh, cut um, entitlements, or you're going to have a global depression. And then they'll get what they want, and there'll be a worse global depression. And then they'll say, okay, merge everything into a global government. Have world bonds. And then the Trilateral Commission wrote about this in 75. They plan the whole thing out. It's all public. And then once they've got you really bankrupted, they'll start releasing bioweapons and killing everybody. Everybody will go to watch TV and beg the government. and They'll murder you. I mean, that's how they operate. Oh, boy. Uh, Max Kaiser joins us right now. And I want to get into all of this news, uh, the, the, the $2 billion rogue trade that went on, the mortgage default warnings getting worse, jobless claims. Don't worry, though, they're going to take anybody's kid who's overweight, they're announcing here in the U.S., and shy children at risk of being diagnosed with mental disorder. If they don't like talking to the government pedophiles, they're mentally ill. I mean, basically, hell itself is being released. The government has undermined the family. Society's degenerating. Nihilists want to be destroyed, and they will be. Um, welcome, Max Kaiser, to the happy hour. Yo, Alex Jones. It's Max. I am here. So, um, Al Gore says pay your carbon taxes or space aliens will attack. But let's just set that aside, the 24 hours of reality. Uh, what do you make of the accelerating global meltdown? I mean, I'm, from, from your perspective, am I right in saying it? It's very simple. They're holding us hostage again for a new, even more authoritative corporate body with, through the bureaucracy, uh, and then if we don't give them what they want, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, create a world depression. Well, one of your uh, earlier callers said it best, the, saying that it's about centralizing power. Now, when I was on your show last time, I said that Society General, the bank in France, was about to go bankrupt, along with BNP, and that's true. Now, what happened today? We got the news that they're going to create a new huge European-wide funding facility to refinance the debt of BNP and Societe Generale as part of the centralization of power in Europe, as part of the centralization of power around the world. The bank stocks go up 10 or 15 percent on the day. Everybody says, oh, we're out of the woods. But they don't recognize that underneath this is loss of sovereignty, and it's getting worse. It is. And, and they could just create some new bank that doesn't have power and dump the debt into that. And a lot of economists I talk to say that's the best way to go uh, and simply monetize it, but don't put it into circulation. Instead, they're going to slash uh, the benefits and the infrastructure up the taxes, killing the economy further, and then transfer it to a dictatorial group, which then won't even fix anything, which is good because then they'll hold us hostage again for even more power. Well, the key to transferring this debt or re-securitizing the debt is to keep interest rates near zero, as they are in the United States, and I guess this is going to be the case in Europe too, uh, which means that people with savings, people with pension accounts continue to get zero on those returns. So this is economic oppression. This is subsidy of the people who have money, who have savings, who have pension accounts, who are underwriting and subsidizing this re-securitization of the bond market so that none of the traffickers in the bonds, the banks at the top, have to suffer any bonus loss. So it's financial oppression through artificially low interest rates. I liken this to financial Jim Crow laws. If you're an average person, you borrow money at 35 or 40 percent. If you're a white guy working at Goldman Sachs, you borrow money at negative 5 percent. It's a financial Jim Crow law. It's a rigged table that's at a 90 degree angle. Uh, we're down here at the bottom with the globalist uh, hanging their rear ends over and doing you know what to us. All right, I don't usually use such verbal flourishes, but there's no way to describe all of this. As going garbage. back to Max Kaiser. Max, recap what we're seeing happen in Europe. Every time the banksters hold us hostage and we give them more power, then things only get worse. I mean, would this just go on forever until all civilization collapsed and they just rolled around in big piles of gold? I mean, what's happening in Europe? Well, what is missing in Europe was what we saw in the United States during the 2008 
debacle, the famous TARP bailout, and this type of facility or lending facility does not exist in Europe. So uh, Merkel and Sarkozy are, and other leaders are working to get to a similar type of nationalized or federalized balance sheet, lending facility, TARP-like bailout mechanism, so that they can pretend and extend and roll these debts out even even more than what they currently are. And, um, you know, this is uh, what's going to mean going forward is that all of the Europe zone will be managed financially out of Berlin. So uh, the First Reich, the Second Reich, and the Third Reich uh, did not succeed in creating a Europe dominated by Germany. But the Fourth Reich, the new federalization of the Eurozone vis-a-vis the banking disaster, will be successful. So Germany becomes a superpower, a reunified Germany, competing with China for domination. The U.S., long gone. Well, you said it. Uh, what do you see then happening in the future? I mean, uh, do do the banksters just fully occupy everything, invincible, uh, and they can just rob and steal everything and will become the actual, you know, Lord Rothschild, supreme ruler of Earth, and his vice supreme leader, uh, Lord Rockefeller? I mean, is it just they, they rule everything, and, and instead of Bernie Madoff going to jail, they become supreme ruler? Well, it's, uh, it's debt slavery, and... Um Legalized uh, slavery is coming to the world again, uh, coming to America. But, you know, I want to touch base on the UBS um, rogue trading scandal, because I think this is kind of interesting. Uh, of the last 24 hours, we've had another rogue trader, this time for UBS. They lost $2 billion. And I think it's important for people to understand that in the role of the financial mercenary in the global banking system, these are equivalent to the mercenaries that are operating in Iraq or Afghanistan. They are independent contractors, but they work inside these banks like a UBS or a BNP or a Bank of America or Goldman Sachs. And their job, they're given unlimited credit. And they're given access to weapons of mass financial destruction like credit default swaps and other uh, leveraged instruments. And the objective is to create chaos, to blow things up, to blow up the Greek economy, to blow, blow up the Irish economy. Because in the chaos, what happens on the financial markets is that volatility means greater premium spread widening for derivatives and options, which is like just pouring money into the coffers of the generals on Wall Street who let these financial mercenaries loose. And once they make a big mistake like this guy caught, and then they just cut him loose and they disavow all knowledge. James Creville at Society General just a couple of years ago caught doing exactly the same type of thing. Uh, he, he was a financial mercenary for his master, Society General. He made one mistake too many. They cut him loose. A lot of the traders at the World Trade Towers are financial mercenaries. That's why when they do the whole counting up of the casualties of 9-11, I don't include the financial mercenaries. They're just mercenaries, and there were over 1,000 of them. So you can't say that close to 3,000 people died. You have to say there were 2,000 civilians and then 1,000 financial mercenaries. But that's their job. That's what they're trained to do. They're on the front lines of a financial war. So let's not have any pity for these folks because that they're just doing their job as financial mercenaries. And this is really all over the world banking system. You see this happening every single day. And it just transfers wealth to that top one-tenth of one percent, the generals of this financial war, and everyone else is getting the, their wealth stolen from them. Now... Shifting gears to the Middle East, uh, Israel is now pulled out their ambassadors out of Jordan, uh, which was seen as a bastion of stability, and says, that, uh, well, well, their news says that it's hanging by a thread. Uh, it's now confirmed that al-Qaeda forces have been given control of Libya, and now NATO says they may have to fight them. Uh, how do you see the Middle East tying into this? Because the banksters like to start wars, that it, and people say, well, why? Because it becomes a political distraction and people tend to go along with more tyranny and more financial austerity if there's a big war going on what's your view on that how that fits in the mix here max well the oil is a key component in the oil cocaine money laundering uh, trifecta of of uh, of scams that are around the world and the libyan oil is a key part of the key component in that 
And uh, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, the biggest mistake he, he made was doing a peace deal with Tony Blair. I mean, that's like letting he, – he, he thought he was a bad, a bad guy. Tony Blair is one of the prima financial terrorists in the world. This is like letting, you know, uh, kryptonite into your, into your house, Tony Blair. It, once Tony Blair's nose got under the, uh, the tent – uh, that, that country was doomed because he brought in Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. They stole all the sovereign wealth funds. They traded away the country's fortunes. They brought in uh, other bankers. And before right now, they've, they're completely screwed up. So the, now the oil is uh, firmly in control of those who trade the cocaine. We know that we've got Wachovia Bank was caught laundering almost $400 billion of cocaine money. That was the cause of the 2008 credit collapse. Uh, then you have... Uh, this uh, seized oil in Libya, thanks to the same group, and it all is wrapped nicely with the back-end derivatives trading and credit default swaps amongst our friends on Wall Street and in Europe and around the world. So the oil is one of the three primary commodities that fuel and fund the triangle of financial weaponry and death. Well, but none of this really matters, the global meltdown. The, the, there's an NBA player claiming that he had... Um sex with Sarah Palin, and so that's that's what's really important here today. Well, I have news for you. I'm in touch now. You know, they're having elections in, um, in, in Tunisia uh, in a few weeks. Uh, one of uh, a close associate of mine is uh, in the running, his party, to become president and prime minister, and I've been offered a role in helping to shape uh, the, the new economy in Tunisia. So the next time we speak, I may be actually in a role in helping the Tunisian government reshape their economy uh, after this next election, if our party wins. Uh, and I think this could be a, a really important uh, step forward. As you know, I spoke to you from Cairo. I spoke with you from, from Beirut. Uh, and I've done shows in Qatar. And uh, I know the area well. I've done a lot of work there. And uh, now we're going to take it to the next level by actually helping reshape this economy in Tunisia, depending on the outcome of this election. Uh, and then uh, we'll try to attack the global banksters from a new stronghold right there in North Africa. All right, stay there, Max. I want to look at a couple other areas on the economy. Gold, silver, where do you see that going? I want to get into this uh, $2 billion rogue trade. Is that really what's going on here? A lot of times they'll, they'll, they'll run a scam and claim it's somebody else. We'll discuss it all on the other side of this quick break with Max Kaiser. I'm going to jam in some of your phone calls. Like I'll take some with Max, and i got to read this 19. Now, Max, I know that I already brought this up to you earlier, but, but specifically with this rogue trader and this $2 billion. And a lot of times in the past, I've seen insiders manipulate things, and they'll blame something uh, on a, quote, rogue trader. And I'm seeing a lot of different strategies right now to try to keep gold and silver down uh, is that going to be successful? Well, you see today, Alex, breaking news that HSBC was dropped as a defendant in the case charging silver manipulation, HSBC and J.P. Morgan. Uh, J HSBC is no longer a defendant in the lawsuit uh, who claimed that uh, HSBC and J.P. Morgan were manipulating the silver futures market. This, of course, uh, is a case that everyone was very excited about six months ago because it looked like uh, the bank, uh, HSBC, was going to face some justice here. But uh, our old friend, Bart Chilton, who is one of the commissioners at the CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, who I know, uh, I can tell you, uh, in the, you know, uh, w with absolute certainty that he was caught red-handed um, in the box office futures uh, night, uh, scandal with Cantor Fitzgerald's Cantor Exchange, uh, basically... Um, kowtowing to the industry and completely uh, not fulfilling his role as a regulator. So he's a dirty regulator, Bart Chilton. He, he's a guy who is a regulator for hire. Uh, he obviously, somebody got to him in whatever the usual methods. Uh, so HSBC has been dropped. So the war can, between paper and metal continues. Uh, obviously, if Europe is going to try to introduce a euro bond and resecuritize and repackage a few trillion in toxic, worthless debt and roll it into some new um, euro uh, product, uh, then people are excited that paper will triumph. But of course, uh, this only happens if interest rates are zero, and that can, that only means that purchasing power collapses, so that people's purchasing power is collapsing. The poverty rates in America and around the world are skyrocketing, 
Uh, this is this is not no. The dispute. United States is now in greater debt than it was even in the depths of depression. We passed that Rubicon three years ago. We have the poorest population ever. Uh, there hasn't been an overall wage increase since 1996. That came out this week, and that's with cooked government numbers. The insiders have all the advantage, and now they're coming in with all these new taxes, not to fund getting out of debt, but to further extinguish the economy, to consolidate it. Where does it end, though? How far can these people push? Because they've been so good at it, it's already causing revolution worldwide, and then even those revolutions get out of hand. Well, that's the thing there. They are um, making it uh, a, a revolution. Um, the only course of action, really, and we see this, is that the global insurrection against banker occupation, which we talked about five years ago, is getting more pronounced every single month. You know, Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO of J.P. Morgan, uh, he was... Uh, just made the comment last week when he's asked to uh, participate in what are called the Basel III Accords to raise the minimum capital requirements for banks. He said that asking J.P. Morgan to raise the capital requirement in that bank is anti-American and attacking America. Uh, meanwhile, uh, J Jamie Dimon has put, they're the ones, J.P. Morgan, who run the food stamp program. They're the one who actually create the, the swipe cards that people go and no, they no, no. They always they always wrap themselves uh, in in the American flag while they're destroying it. It's like the head of General Electric uh, moving all the jobs uh, that they're creating to China while lecturing everyone about our carbon footprint. I mean, it's it's, it's just incredible. Well, like I said, there's a lot of good things happening in Tunisia if this party that I'm supporting uh, wins this next election. And I'm going to be lobbying for people in America to leave America and to move to Tunisia because we're going to rebuild a country with some real values and basically emigrate from that cesspit uh, of uh, poverty and kleptocracy, the United States of scumbags. So we've got to move on. We've got to find a place where people who want freedom and democracy can live. It's not the United States. Trust me, that's the last place in the world now you're going to find any kind of decency. But everything's okay. Michelle Obama is pledging that restaurants are promising to follow a new White House food uh, menu for children. Uh, while they sell the GMO and all the garbage at us at 100 miles an hour. Uh, don't worry, the government now is going to decide what we eat. Uh, so Michelle Obama is going to keep us safe, and that's really what matters, uh, Max. Look, there's uh, the famous uh, parody uh, of um, <coughs> a population like the one in, in the United States being subjected to a kleptocracy and a corpocracy, being forced to eat their own feces. And this is what Michelle Obama is really talking about. She believes that the best food Americans could eat is their own feces. And if she can make a nickel doing it, then that's what she's all about. She'll happily take that money. Well, she's got always got a grin on her face like she's been doing that. But <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You know, I, mean, the, the, I mean, the people running for office, uh, including your buddy, uh, you know, Rick Perry down there in Texas. Um, you know, th th these folks are beyond the Manchurian candidate. All right, stay there. Let's do, let's do a few calls. A few calls, Max. Go back to Max and take a few phone calls, and I've got to get to 1984 because I've promised to do it. Uh, but uh, I also want to tell you about our Twitter account. Uh, it's uh, Real Alex Jones. We've got links to it at InfoWars.com. And MaxKaiser.com is, of course, Max's website. Uh, Max, what's your Twitter account? Because I heard Stacey Herbert, uh, your, your, your other twin uh, broadcaster with you, also I, I'm told your squeeze, uh, she's really the boss over there, and I heard her Twitter's getting getting bigger than yours. And by the way, why won't Stacy come on my show? Yeah, uh, Stacy's Twitter's getting bigger than mine, and it's, it's getting almost embarrassing because you hate to have. Well, she's a girl; you can't hurt her having a bigger Twitter. Yeah, her Twitter's getting huge, and uh, I want my Twitter to be bigger than Stacy's Twitter. Now, the reason she won't come on your show, Alex, you know she. She's uh, she she because she fears really that uh, she hates to see grown men cry. And if you put her up against Lord Moncton on that uh, man-made global warming debate, uh, the good old Lord Moncton would break down in tears and have to concede all of his points and run away back to his. Okay, fine. Worship. I will set up a debate between Lord Moncton and Stacy. My dear lady. Mm. Uh, he would. Well, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I know you're just always saying, get Stacy on, get Stacy on. No, she'll come on. I know she'll come on.
I, I understand. Yeah, someday, so when you know, who knows what what uh, uh, when when the when the moment is right, then the whirlwind that is Stacey Herbert will appear in your midst, and all oh, hell will break loose. All right, that's enough screwing around, Kaiser. I appreciate it. Um, let's just go ahead and talk to Scott in Pennsylvania. Scott, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, guys? Um, great show today, Alex. You got, you really articulate what we're facing, and it's very hard. And you're right. You probably can't really uh, tell us exactly how bad it is because it is that difficult to understand. Um, I, I uh, was going to – earlier you talked about Albert Pike, and I'd love to see a special report if you're able to uh, get time to do something like that. No, that's a great right idea. Now. In fact, I already had an idea to do a thing on the globalist Illuminati philosophy for the news show for the TV show. So, yeah, we'll do an Albert Pike for you. Oh, I appreciate that. And uh, the, the quote that comes to mind is a guy named Mario Salvo, I think, and he said, there comes a time when the system becomes so odious, you have to basically uh, put your body against the levers and gears and, and say you're not going to participate anymore. And maybe one day we'll have had enough and we'll just stop participating. I think well, that's, that's what it's all about. They package getting us to participate in their system, like be reasonable, be good, and, and they use psychology. It's time to just stop participating. And it's time to get angry. It's time to get in their face. Then it's time to start shouting them down. And we're going to defeat these people. Do you have any questions for Lord Kaiser? Oh, you know, I, I love Max Kaiser's work. I wish I was smart enough to really ask him a question i just think oh you you're smart that. enough that's ridiculous you had a great quote <laughs> you're smart enough to know that you know max actually got to start in media and back when they had those old mcdonald's commercials where they used real actors he played the hamburglar um in in in, in one of those when you were a teenager max i've just revealed that you were the hamburglar Yes, I was on a ticket. I was on an acid trip, and I woke up in a hamburger <laughs> costume in the middle of a shoot for McDonald's. And I'm telling you, I left the trauma. <laughs> oh, man, Max, I got to go see you in France sometime. You're so funny. I could say the most ridiculous thing, and no, he's going to come back. He's not really the hamburger. Yeah, well, actor. you know, you can come to France, but, you know, when um, uh, Rumsfeld tried to get him to Paris last year, he was almost arrested because there's a warrant out for his arrest, you know, for war crimes and crimes against humanity. He had to literally hightail it to the airport with a, a posse. Was I wonder if they're going to arrest Sarkozy for war crimes, though. Well, you know, Sarkozy and Chirac and the whole French political establishment is pretty corrupt as well. Uh, different countries, different style of corruption. But, um, you know, they're all connected, as you know. Oh, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Carl in California. Go ahead. Alex, Hi. I want to I thank you for paying for my phone call. <laughs> you bet. So you're talking to the Hamburglar right now. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. God bless you, Max. Uh, appreciate all your work. I don't have any particular questions. I had a couple of things for Alex, but uh, I have a, actually 100 things for Alex to talk to. Well, about, sure, that's but... fine. Kaiser can comment on them. Go ahead, sir. Well, uh, it, it's about something that's going on locally here in California. Last Sunday, of course, it was the 9-11 commemoration, that disgusting event. There was a radio show that welcomed our phone calls to call in and say, how did it affect you? Where were you then and where are you now? And how, is it, how are the dynamics between the, between the time that you uh, experienced that event and how, how has it changed you? I called in to, to try to say, you know, had my chance. Uh, this is a clear channel station, of course. And I tried to, tried to get in and they would not let me on the air. Okay. <laughs> because, because I was going to tell them the truth. Yeah, so basically they welcome your comments but then screen your calls. You no, know, no, for most of these stations, if you're a 9-11 truther, unless it's George Norrie or somebody who is uh, somebody who honors the First Amendment, uh, you're not going to get on air. You've got to basically, I don't like to lie ever. And so I will basically just spin it. And I'll say, yeah, I want to talk about this. And then I'll say what I was going to say. Because when I'm driving around or whatever, I call on the talk radio, national, local, all the time. Uh, I will uh, say what I said I was going to say and then go into something else. And so that's basically what you have to do. They're definitely trying. I can see screening calls to not have people on with bad phones or people that are incoherent. We don't do that and sometimes get the incoherent calls because I want to be a pure show. Uh, but I call in to shows in San Antonio and Austin and I, don't, and I don't call in a lot, you know, maybe every six months to, you know, the each one of the five or six talk stations. Maybe once a week I call into one of them, but there's quite a few. So maybe every few months I call into one of them. And they'll go, no way, Alex, you're not coming on. 
And I, and I don't even plug myself when I get on these radio shows. I just, I just Is this cut. questions for me? I mean, you talk all the whole show, man. I mean, what about me? I'm sitting here on hold, and you're blabbing on about some story nobody cares about. What, why don't I, can't I answer the question? Okay, Hamburglar, he asked me a question. But go ahead. He said it didn't matter what the question was. I could answer it. Well, then I, well, then I missed what he was saying. Uh, <laughs> was your question for me, sir, or for Max? Well, I, was, I, I called in a couple of hours ago, so I've yes. been sitting on. And I no, he said he wanted to talk to me, burglar. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take that back. Okay. Well, God uh, bless you, Max. Anyway, God bless Hold you. on. Put him back on screen. We've got him joining us via Skype right now. What? Okay. Max, you're on screen. Uh, but no, Max, comment on that, how they try to shape the media and the talking points. Well, it's very interesting. You know, I just saw um, uh, Democracy Now!, which is a show which usually I don't think your listeners would necessarily be listening to Amy Goodman and Democracy Now. But tonight she had Bob Graham on, who former governor of Florida, who now wants to reopen the 9-11 investigation and investigate what's all the activity with the Saudi and the Saudi government. I mean, this is, uh, you know, everyone's been uh, bad-mouthing the so-called truthers for years, uh, but now it looks like uh, they really are going to reopen this case and really dig down into the participation of the Saudi government and all the Saudi nationals who were in the U.S. who were helping the 15 out of the 19 hijackers who, who were part of that event, um, uh, aiding them uh, leading up to the event. And now it's come out that weeks before the event, um, uh, there were a lot of uh, noise being reported to the FBI and the CIA and all these other agencies about a lot of suspicious activity that anybody uh, with half a brain would have seen was adding up to something. Well, yeah, even Richard Clark now has talked about this, and, and, and the makers of Press for Truth, it was a really good documentary. They're making a new one and interviewed Richard Clark. They discovered the CIA agents that were ordering the stand down, and they sent a letter to the CIA saying, please respond. And they said, we're going to arrest your butt. How's that sound? We're not, we'll respond by doing that. So a lot of people 10 years later are getting close. That's why they have a special NSA office, according to several of our sources. And later this got leaked and was confirmed, at least it's going on partially, that tracks government whistleblowers like Sybil Edmonds and people they know know. And, and so they're getting very close to this coming out, Max. Yeah, I just think on the the mainstream media, which has put a stonewall and to the, what the caller's point is that it's been a, a topic that is verboten. You can't even speak about it at all. But I think you've got now this uh, even like a democracynow.org or Bob Graham and these folks, which are can really aligned more with the mainstream, are starting to make this a mainstream topic. And so that, I think, is really an interesting development in the history of this. It certainly is. OK, thank you so much, uh, Carl. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Scott and Mass. Scott, you're on the air. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Uh, Jones and Mr. Uh, uh, Kaiser. How are you? It's Mr. Burglar. He's fine. Uh, I'd like to discuss with you, you know, we have 9-11 uh, that happened, the commemoration for that. We're in a depression, not a recession. Uh, millions of people are uh, unemployed. You've got a, a Federal Reserve out of control and Goldman Sachs and Bear Stearns. My point is this, is that all the points that you're making, is spelled out clearly in the protocols of the learned elders of Zion that the Jews control Wall Street. The New World Order is, 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 is a Jewish conspiracy. In, let me read you protocol number five in the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. A little, a, little, a little sentence here. It says, in place of the rulers of today, we shall set up a bogey, which will be called the super government administration. Its hands will reach out in all directions like nippers. And its organization will be of such colossal dimensions that it cannot fail to subdue all the nations of the world. My point is this, and I have a question for both of you gentlemen. Everything you're discussing, the New World Order, is spelled out in the protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, which, by the way, is not a forgery, as the Jews claim. It is an authentic document that supports Jewish world domination. Okay, well, I've read it, and it reads like a comic book. Uh, there have been lots of governments that use centralized coteries and behind the throne super systems and all of that. And from what I've gotten, it was the Russian czars put that out to be able to persecute groups. I have no doubt that there aren't political Jewish mafia out there wanting to take stuff over because that's what groups do. But uh, you know, some document I can't prove either way or the other. I'm just trying to expose government corruption and not get into names and races and and uh, religions. I mean, the Soviets tried to take over. The communist Chinese have. Pol Pot. I mean, this is what every group, you know, Julius Caesar was doing things like that. I don't, don't think he was Jewish. 
So, you know, that's my point is the humans tend to act the same throughout history. And I get people calling in, you know, always getting mad at me saying, I've got to say it's the Masons or I got to say it's the Jews or I got to say it's the Catholics or I got to say. And then whenever I don't attack one of those groups and say they're the ultimate evil in the world or whatever, then I always get attacked for working for those groups when when the establishment does not like me. Uh, Max Kaiser, what's your comment on the Jewish banker issue? Whenever I hear this, uh, my uh, competitive uh, streak gets rallied, if you will, because when I was working on Wall Street, uh, I was working for the other guys. Uh, I, I'm an Episcopalian, uh, and I was working for Payne Weber, uh, and then you've got uh, J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley, and these are the white shoe firms, you know, that uh, uh, Salenti talks about The white about the shoe boys! That's right. Now, these are the Protestants uh, on Wall Street, and it's uh, very competitive with the Jews on Wall Street, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, et cetera. And it falls along these lines. And I was always playing for the, uh, the Protestants. And, and you look at Geithner, Bernanke, Paulson. These, these are not Jewish guys. These are white shoe Protestants. I know, guys. but they say they are, though. People say I'm Jewish. Uh, I mean, people say I'm also a commander of the Vatican Supreme Warlock Army, but... Uh, and a reptoid, but, well, but I mean, people say that in, in, in using it as, let's say, an epithet. Uh, but what I'm saying is that there, there is actually a competitive divisions there where it does fall along these religious. Oh, listen, all. the ADL oh. was set up because Jewish narcotics traffickers this is on record. We're getting in trouble in New York and it got set up as an attack group. Against, I mean, I'm against the Jewish mafia and, and it's certainly there. But but but. What happens is when you criticize anything going on in the government, they then say you're attacking Jewish people or they say or if you attack the Jewish mafia, they say you are. I'm just covering issues and then people can make their own decision. I think when we make this racial or religious, that's what the globalists want to then get us all fighting with each other instead of let's just get rid of the corrupt system. You know, I mean, I mean, if Warlock, Vatican, Cablers are running it, good. You know, let's let's kick them out of there. I just I want to get rid of this corrupt system instead of jumping into the game the globalists want to play of making it a racial or religious issue. Max, what do you say to that? Well, here's one of the biggest club, goyim club in the world is uh, the CIA. I mean, the CIA was is all about. Uh, you know, Protestant power. This is why uh, it was the basis of creating the CIA was uh, we need to keep the power in the, uh, you know, Northeast uh, Ivy League corridors. Uh, and uh, this is this is all it's a discriminatory almost. To this they also degree. recruit a lot of Mormons into there. Max, we are just out of time, my friend. And I really appreciate you joining me. I, I appreciate the last caller and everybody else pastor in Ohio and so many others. I might go into overdrive and take your calls, Tracy and others, but I, I've got to read this 1984 quote. And when we come back, I keep promising to do it and then never doing it. I don't even know five minutes uh, will properly uh, do it. But uh, Max Kaiser, thanks for joining us, buddy. Anytime. All right. We will be back with a final segment, the main radio show. And then I'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Mountain, PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. And if you support free speech and this message, you want to take the globalist on to build the next level network, become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber today.